Abnormal uterine bleeding in 10 minutes or less. Starting with the definitions, these are very high yield PIM questions, so make sure you commit this slide to memory and uh, pause the video along the way as uh, necessary. So any patient with more than seven days of vaginal bleeding per cycle has menorrhagia and thus needs to be worked up in the clinic setting. The whole definition of greater than 80 cc's is more of a research criteria where they actually spin out the pads and tampons to quantify how much blood loss is um, being reduced after treatment with experimental medications against uh, menorrhagia. These are the most common causes of abnormal uterine bleeding. This is the algorithm found in Williams Gynecology for patients with low risk for endometrial cancer. This is the algorithm for patients with high risk for, sorry, moderate to high risk for endometrial cancer. Again, this is the differential diagnosis that we'll be working with. Starting with the basic workup, you want to do a pregnancy test and that way you can take that off your differential. Do a pap smear so you can take cervical cancer off your differential. Chlamydia, gonorrhea, trichomonas, take infectious disease causes of abnormal uterine bleeding. And now you can assess the patient to see if they're at low risk for endometrial cancer. If they're at low risk for endometrial cancer, the next step will be a trial of medical management. This almost always starts with birth control pills. And um, then you can do plus minus naproxen, ibuprofen. You can also do Lupron. You can do the Mirena IUD, which we use all the time. You can also use Listita, which is a new medication that's been used in Europe and recently got FDA approval here in the United States, an anti-fibrinolytic. So that will take care of any anovulatory bleeding. If uh, the patient fails medical management or has risk factors for endometrial cancer, they need to get a transvaginal ultrasound. Try to hold off on the saline infused sono or the sono hiss until you have tissue diagnosis. And the endometrial biopsy is a plus minus for failed medical management, but a definite positive for endometrial cancer risk factors. So after you do the transvaginal ultrasound, you should have really evaluated the anatomy, and then you can uh, take uh, fibroids and polyps off your differential diagnosis. So who needs an endometrial biopsy? So these are the uh, indications for endometrial biopsy based on the ACOG practice bulletin number 14 and the uh, prolog gynecology clinical vignette. So anybody over the age of 35 should get an endometrial biopsy automatically according to ACOG and this is because the incidence of endometrial cancer based on age starts increasing exponentially at the age of 35 even though the absolute incidence is only like six and a hundred thousand based on the SEER database in 1995. But anybody with um, a risk factor who's less than 20, who's less than 35 should also get an endometrial biopsy and these risk factors include obesity, high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, anovulation, and tamoxifen exposure. One caveat to the endometrial biopsy that is commonly quoted applies specifically to postmenopausal women who have bleeding and so uh, it's a very specific cohort don't try to apply it to more than postmenopausal women with bleeding and this is because postmenopausal women with bleeding oftentimes will have atrophic um, endometrium or they'll have a stenotic os or they just have inadequate sampling of tissue so there are some studies to suggest that if you do a transvaginal ultrasound and the endometrial stripe or the endometrial complex or the endometrial echo three names for the same thing is very thin less than or equal to four millimeters, you can forego the endometrial biopsy because the incidence of endometrial cancer is so low. Timmermans et al. published a meta-analysis in 2010 in the Green Journal that actually lowered this cutoff to about less than or equal to three millimeters before you can forego an endometrial biopsy. A, uh, the Japanese study in 1997 actually says that the cutoff should be variable depending on how long the patient has been postmenopausal. All that being said, some of the things just feel more comfortable having an endometrial biopsy on all their patients with postmenopausal bleeding and um, and uh, these are the articles, the four that we just talked about. You can pause it to read the abstract or get the PubMed ID, download them from the library, their website, or I can email them to you if you have. Uh, uh, we'll take care of endometrium and endometrial cancer off your differential diagnosis and now you feel more comfortable going back to evaluate the anatomy a little bit better with saline infused sonogram, sonohistogram or a uh, diagnostic hysteroscopy.
The reason you want to wait until you have a uh, tissue diagnosis before doing a diagnostic hysteroscopy is because it's actually hysteroscopy can increase the malignant cell, um, sorry, increase the malignant cytology in the uh, parental cancer. There's prognosis. That even golden stand, the gold stand for for sampling the endometrium is diagnostic his sampling of endometrial biopsy. I'll take him to the OR and do a dilation, but I won't push the cavity. So now you have chemical cause uterine bleeding, and then you're left with dysfunctional uterine bleeding, uh, and it's a diagnosis of exclusion. The this probably constitutes about 10% of patients with abnormal uterine bleeding, and this is the classic situation where you use endometrial ablation. Uh, sometimes you'll see people do endometrial ablations after a polypectomy or a myomectomy. But in theory, if you took the polyp out or a submucosal, submucosal fibroid, then that should have taken care of the bleeding. And uh, sometimes you'll hear that the justification for doing an endometrial ablation afterwards is that you can't be sure that the patient doesn't have some sort of uh, dysfunctional uterine bleeding along with their polyps or fibroids. So that's the end of this talk. The next talk uh, that will be along these lines is endometrial cancer in 10 minutes or less.